Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 19th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Today I wrote a quick diary with uh, some of the issues that you may need to consider as you're moving back to a real office from your home office, like VPN configurations or considering, for example, some of the cloud migrations that may have happened while you were at home and how they may affect, for example, firewalls and such as you're moving back to your office office if you are about to start working from a real office again if you're not lucky enough to continue working from home take a look at the list and maybe let me know what i missed or uh, any comments that you may have and we got updates from adobe for adobe bridge captivate media encoder photoshop and the xmp toolkit sdk Probably most noteworthy here is Media Encoder and Photoshop as these vulnerabilities will allow for arbitrary code execution and probably Photoshop here is the more likely target. An import P3 has a great blog uh, regarding some surveillance software that they are calling Tetris that's entirely implemented in JavaScript. Reminds me a little bit in its capabilities of Beef, the browser exploitation framework, but was found in two different uh, Chinese language websites, apparently targeting uh, Chinese users in that it does check the language of the browser and only acts if it is set to Chinese. Real nice and detailed uh, write-up, so I definitely recommend uh, you uh, read it in order to learn more about how this really works. Not much a user uh, can really do about uh, this particular spyware as far as detection goes. At this point, at least when the blog was uh, written, antivirus uh, didn't really detect it, and that has been a problem uh, with this JavaScript uh, type uh, malware in the past that it often just essentially uses JavaScript functionality. One of the indicators of compromise that you may want to look for is a domain called uh, googledrivers.com. That's the domain where some of the malicious code is loaded from. Also, it does attempt to, at least by file name, uh, impersonate, to impersonate a jQuery. Import P3 does assess that this spyware is probably intended uh, to affect Chinese uh, dissidents, at least based on the sites it was found on. It sort of has the pattern of a waterhole attack where an attacker would uh, install malware like this on a site where they assume a specific uh, demographic uh, would uh, congregate. A particularly interesting technique that's being used here is uh, JSONP hijacking. What this essentially means is that uh, this JavaScript uh, will try to connect to about 60 or so different popular websites uh, just using JavaScripts and APIs on those websites in order to learn more about the user. Usernames, for example, uh, can be retrieved from various sites, potentially also uh, credentials, of course, in some cases. This is in part enabled by uh, these websites allowing cross-site requests from all websites by setting their access control allow origin header to the wildcard asterisk. And a nice write-up from the DFIR report about the latest version of TrickBot. And uh, sort of one new trick that TrickBot employs here is that Cobalt Strike this time comes in the form of a fake 1Password installer. 1Password, of course, a well-respected password wallet and, of course, is not really involved here. But uh, the installer does claim to install 1Password probably in order to who make the user feel safe. And well, that's it for today. If you like this podcast, please recommend it. And yes, we are also available via Amazon's Alexa, via the Flash briefing. So that's another way how you may be able to listen to this podcast. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.